Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to month number six of the Hospitality TV Wine Club. As always, thank you so much for your support. I can't believe it's month number six already. To everybody who supported me from the beginning, thank you so much. I hope you've been enjoying the wine so far. This month, we're gonna do Merlot, right? As always, a new world versus old world comparison. You know, just don't be this guy. I wanna drink Merlot. We're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Merlot. First of all, nobody likes that guy. Second of all, you should be open to trying different styles of Merlot, of wine. Don't have one bad experience and let it dictate your entire drinking experience, right? So I personally have always been a fan of Merlot. I think there's some really beautiful expressions. Some of the best Bordeaux I've had have been Merlot based that are absolutely mind blowing. Um, and obviously a lot of killer domestic and Italian Merlot, some killer super Tuscans that are based out of Merlot. A lot of really good options there. So let's jump into the wine. So wine number one, we have Felix de Biac. So this is actually from the producer Chateau Biac. This is the Felix de Biac label. We've got a little, little cat on the label after the Felix supposedly translates to a, a funny tune or a fun tune that you sing while you're in the shower. So the Felix de Biac label is kind of their second label of the Chateau. It's 84% Merlot and 16% Cabernet Sauvignon. Now something interesting to note, on the label, you're gonna see that it says Cote de Bordeaux, and then in smaller print it says Cadillac, right? So these are, the Cote de Bordeaux are small areas within Bordeaux outside of the kind of the really main appellations like on the left bank and on the right bank where you get really great Bordeaux, but you get kind of the expensive Bordeaux as well. Cote de Bordeaux is a way to introduce yourself to Bordeaux without breaking the bank and still getting some really quality old school French red wine. So the Cote de Bordeaux, this is coming from the area of Cadillac or Cadillac as it's pronounced in France. The Chateau itself was built in 1755. So it's got a ton of history to it. It's obviously changed hands quite a bit to get to this point. Um, the recent owners I think took over in 2006. I love that it's very textbook French style of Merlot in that it's gonna be a little bit on the drier side with a drier finish, right? I know it's a very kind of a broad term, but that's kind of what this wine delivers. Let's taste the wine. It almost smells like a drier kind of wood, drier sawdust. The fruit smells on the drier side. It doesn't smell like a big jammy style of wine. Let's taste it, let's see what's going on. This wine is very dry, right? It has this very dark red cherry and blackberry component, but definitely on the drier side. Um, it has kind of an edge to it. It's a little bit sharp on the palate, but I like it. It's very focused. And again, that drier peppery finish to the wine. I definitely wouldn't go as far as calling this an earthy wine, but there is more, where it was clay on the nose, it's more of a gravelly minerality on the palate, which is really interesting. I think we're getting a little bit of this sawdust, kind of woody, you know, freshly shaved pencil lead component to the wine that I was mentioning. It's there, it's subtle, um, but that could be some indication of oak on the wine, right? The, the wine does spend 16 months in barrel, not new oak, but six, 16 months in barrel before it's bottled and released into the market. The great thing is 2015 was a good vintage in Bordeaux, right? So we are drinking a very good vintage, which is fantastic. That's always a plus to have. And that's wine number one. So I would say that this wine definitely falls into like the medium plus to full body. It is 14.5% alcoholic. Like we're gonna see on the label here. It does finish rich, right? It has a weightiness to the palate and it finishes dry, which is what we like out of Bordeaux. At least I would say that it's more of an old school style of Bordeaux in that sense. Other things that you might compare it to, you know, some super Tuscans from Chianti that have a little bit of Merlot or Cabernet Franc or Cabernet Sauvignon in them. Definitely on the same kind of tier of this wine. Um, super Tuscan, even possibly some drier Riojas that are more in the modern style that see French oak, not American oak, right? Not that vanilla-y coconut dill thing that's going on with the oak there. This is a little bit sharper, a little bit more focused, a little bit more kept together. That's wine number one, Felix de Biac. Let's check out wine number two. So wine number two today, we have the Hill Family Estate, Hill Family Wines right out of Napa Valley. These guys are four generations of grape growers that finally in this fourth generation, Doug Hill, he established the winery and they started making wine. The wines are fantastic. I've definitely um, been able to enjoy several of their wines. I'm pretty familiar with the Chardonnay, Carly's Cuvée. It's named after Doug Hill's daughter who lives here in San Diego, which is great. Definitely have a San Diego presence. You know, Doug Hill was one of the first to be credited with bringing in vines into the American Canyon area of Napa, which is kind of like in the very south um, eastern corner. This wine specifically is coming from the Beauter Vineyards, right? It's mostly in Oakland, which is very much in the center of Napa, kind of valley floor. Uh, what's interesting about this wine as well is that it is a similar blend to wine number one, to the Bordeaux. So this wine is 87% Merlot. It's a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. It actually has a touch of Syrah and Malbec added to it, which is gonna add a little bit of 
dark fruit components, kind of more concentration and inkiness to the wine. So this wine only has 500 cases produced, definitely falls under small production, which is fantastic. It's been 16 months in 40% new French oak, which I suspect is gonna add a lot of oak character to the wine. Let's check it out. Yeah, definitely on the nose, you're picking up a little bit of that oak, a little bit of that vanilla, a little bit of that caramel. Yeah, the caramel thing is there. It's almost like a toffee component to the wine. There's definitely like a slightly sweeter oak profile to the wine and much more of a fresh, big, opulent style of fruit coming out. It's, coming, it's a combination of like blueberry and blackberry, um, different styles of darker fruit that are coming through in this wine, but definitely more of a riper baked component compared to the drier, sharper fruit notes of the Bordeaux. Let's taste it. Woo, yeah, this is definitely the Cabernet Sauvignon Drinkers Merlot. It is big, it's rich, there's a much more present tannin structure to the wine. Um, the fruit is very, it's almost like a chewy, dense component um, to the fruit component on this wine, which is pretty cool. What I really like about this style of Merlot too is that one, there's a chocolatey espresso note that comes through, which I really like in a lot of bigger New World styles of Merlot. Um, you know, you see this a lot in Washington, you see it a lot, obviously, in Napa. Right, these bigger, richer styles of Merlot that are fantastic. It's funny, there's a little bit of a green note to the wine, um, which you can sometimes get from Cabernet Sauvignon. And by green, I mean like a note of like dried herbs or dried green bell pepper, maybe sage. Like there's kind of this dried herb component to the wine. Again, I like it. It's subtle, it just adds another dimension to the wine. But I would say it's definitely fruit dominant. Um, and the body and structure is what kind of drives the show. There's a lot of value in this wine. It's unbelievable. This is normally, I think, $45 and up on your average retail price. Uh, and this is just one of the two wines that you're getting in the wine club. So definitely a good value wine for what you're getting. It packs a lot of puns for what it is. So guys, as always, thank you so much. Let me know what you think about the two wines. I'd love to get your feedback. Um, thanks again for your support. Talk to you soon.